tonight that you plant in our hearts such seeds that will be a safeguard during the course of our pilgrimage on earth our lives will be adequately guided so that we'll not become victims of the foolishness that has engulfed the age we ask for grace we ask for mercy we ask that you help us in the name of jesus we pray amen you may be seated god bless you hallelujah i say hallelujah okay i was distracted by the rain yesterday and i don't know if you were hearing what i was saying yesterday but i'm back today ah amen first peter chapter 1 verse 13 we need to do this work diligently issue of sanctification is critical. It's a give up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. He's talking about the second coming of Christ. He's giving us uh, an insight into the kind of comportment that we need to sustain so that we can become recipients of a dimension of grace that will be brought to us in the appearing or the revelation of the Lord. The thing about the first coming of Jesus is that in his first coming, he gave us life the product the product of believing in his finished work on the cross the first benefit of that product is that we pass into an economy of life we become partakers we became partakers of the divine nature hallelujah but in his second coming he is coming to bestow upon us immortality There were two things that the gospel revealed. The gospel revealed the possibility that we can become partakers in the very nature of God. We can function in the crucible of the life of God. And the second second aspect of the gospel is that it revealed that we can also become recipients of immortality. We can live beyond the authority of death. Jesus came to commission life in his first coming and in his second coming he commissions immortality. It is the manifestation of immortality is in keeping with his identity as the resurrection. You know, Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth in me, he shall never die. He's talking about a state of immortality. So Jesus came with two identities, the resurrection and the life. He manifested the life in his first coming. So today we are partakers of the divine nature because of Jesus' first coming. In his second coming, he's going to manifest immortality. It is immortality, the a manifestation of immortality that will be responsible for the rapture is the manifestation of immortality that will be responsible for the dead in Christ to rise. It is in that day that the proverb or the statement, death, where is your sting, will now become manifest because when he comes and reveals himself as immortality, death will lose his terror. It, he comes to undo death. And, and that's the fulfillment of that statement that he made 
when he says he is the resurrection and the life. Now, it is in keeping with that his second appearing that the apostle Peter admonishes us that we should give up our loins, the loins of our mind, we must be in an adequate state of mind and we must embrace sobriety and hope to the end for the grace that these to be brought unto us at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Next verse. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lost in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye all in all manner of conversation. The reason why I brought this scripture is because if we are dealing with a holy God, our business with the holy God is going to affect every area of our lives. I was, I forgot that time was ticking when I plunged myself into the book of Leviticus. Are you there? When, my, when I plunged myself into the book of Leviticus, I got lost. Because what the book of Leviticus is about are the meticulous requirements that we must keep if we want to deal with a holy God. Are you there? I know you, most of you have read the book of um, Exodus. And you know of the tyrant called Pharaoh? Are you there? Yes, sir. So the tyrant called Pharaoh put them in captivity. And all of their prayer points, all of their requests, was that God should come deliver them from Pharaoh. And God actually came and performed their heart desires. It was when they were delivered from Pharaoh that they discovered that there was another tyrant that would stop them from entering into the fullness of that which God had called them to be partakers of. Do you know the second tyrant? It's called sin. Even though they were now delivered from Pharaoh, in order for them to relate with a holy God, they now found another limitation, that they were still in bondage. They had come out of the house of bondage. They have come from beneath the hand of the tyrant of all time. Now for them to pass into the graces of their God, only for them to realize that in the state that they were in, they could have no business with God. It was God that chose their ancestors. But they came face to face with a startling reality that even though they were the chosen ones, the God that chose them is a holy God and the impact of doing business with the holy God is going to affect every area of our lives. And that's why I had to bring this scripture out, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15. It says, But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in some things, in all manner of conversation. So the book of Leviticus now opens to show us all the dimensions of requirements that we must put in place to ensure that we can relate with a God that is holy. You know, I told you that the definition of sanctification is what? To be made holy. It is a process, it's a procedure by which we are made holy. And this requirement is not an alternative. The reason why it is not an alternative is because the God that we'll be doing business with happens to be a holy God. And if we're going to deal with a holy God, the implication of that dealing is going to affect every aspect of our being. 
So the book of Leviticus gives us an insight into how the Holy God wants our lives to be ordered. And he gives it in detail and all of that. So I was in that study, picking out all the elements and everything. And all those things were necessary because the God we are dealing with is what? Is the Holy God. Don't ever forget the context of this scripture is in keeping with the end of the age, the appearing of Jesus Christ. And the counsel that Apostle Peter gives us in view of the fact that the Lord will soon appear is a counsel to be holy. That's what the progression of Revelation is talking about. That's what the context of truth is talking about. So I came to announce to us that if we are doing business with a holy God, then we must of necessity be holy. So sanctification is the process by which we are made holy, which is a basic requirement to deal with the holy God. Are you there with me? All right. So I need to tell you a story. Because you, you must have heard of the Torah. How many of you have heard of the Torah? Um, that's what we call the law. All right? Let me, let me try again. What's the meaning of the Torah? Now, we call it the law. Uh, yes, yes. It's not wrong. So you would think that when you open the Torah, you just see laws. That's not exactly how you will find it. Because what, the books that we call the Torah, the five books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Okay? I say, okay. And it will interest you to know, if you do a very, very detailed study, you'll find out that altogether, Moses gave 613 laws. 613 laws. And I found, uh, someone said that, made that statement. I'm not sure how true the statement is, but uh, uh, there is a fruit called the pomegranate. It's a Middle Eastern fruit. When we went to Jerusalem the other time, they gave us a drink of, they squeezed it out, squeezed the drink out for us to drink when we went to Israel. And uh, they said that in that pomegranate fruit, there are 300, 613 seeds inside of it, just like there are 613 laws in the Torah. And medically, it had been proven that if you drink a glass of pomegranate a day, you will not need to see the doctor. The meaning of that is that if we are in sync with the laws of God, we are whole. You get that? Now, so the thing about this Torah which is the five, first five books of the Bible, even though we call it the law, it doesn't appear as the law. What appears, the way, the form, the format in which it is presented is in form of stories. And embedded in these stories, you now find the law. Okay? So, first of all, one of the noticeable things in the Torah is that God chose a man called Abraham. So we see what we call the grace of divine election. There were many human beings upon the face of the earth and it was not as if Abraham did anything that was good. But it was God's authority to choose that was exercised in the choice of Abraham. 
Are you there? Now, part of the reason why God chose Abraham is because God wants a nation that will be his. God wants a people that will operate under his own ideals. God wanted a nation that will operate under his own laws. So that nation will become his nation. And I'd like you to understand that this idea of crystallizing a nation was not man's idea. It was God's idea. Are you still there? So, God chose Abraham. And God began to do a walk through Abraham's lineage. One of the critical moments in the sequence of that family tree was the manifestation of Moses. That was the man that God used to begin to bring into focus the perspectives of the laws of God by which the lives of these people who were descendants of Abraham will be regulated. Are you still with me? Now, when God gave the law through Abraham, through Moses, this was the vision that God had in mind. If you are with me, I'd like you to turn to the book of Exodus chapter I'm coming. Let me check my scriptures. Exodus chapter. Okay. So, the day of Moses was a critical moment in the unfolding of this program because it was Moses that God used to give the law to the children of Israel. Are you there? Out of those ten commandments, if you keep reading the Torah, uh, the people had a problem with keeping the ten commandments, so God will give other laws. And when he gives other laws, then the children of Israel will break the laws again, then he gives additional laws to capture areas that were not captured in the first instance. So God keeps giving laws. The children of Israel keep breaking the laws and he keeps expanding the laws. And that's how the laws grew until they became 613 laws. This was Abraham, Moses' conclusion. Haven't seen cycles of God bringing laws and seeing unfortunately how the children of Israel could not live up to God's expectation, broke God's heart again and again. So Moses saw a pattern that made him make some strange statements that I would like you to see in the book of Exodus chapter 19. Then we'll do Deuteronomy chapter 30. Are you there with me in Exodus 19? All right, so this is the instruction. Um, let's begin from verse number three. And Moses went up unto God... And the Lord called him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on the eagle's wings, and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if ye obey my voice indeed and keep my commandments, then ye shall be a 
peculiar treasure. I'd like you to underline that. You shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for the earth is mine. How many of you still remember the definition we gave yesterday, the definition of holiness that we gave yesterday? We said that for something to be said it is holy, that thing must be separate from other things. That thing must be different from other things. And when we say different, what we mean is difference in terms of use. The things can look alike, but the ones that are dedicated to God can no longer function to fulfill mundane objectives. The only objectives that they can fulfill are objectives that are connected to God unto whom they have been dedicated. So when we say something is holy, we mean the thing is different. When we say something is holy, we mean the thing is set apart unto God. It is only in God's world that that thing can take on a purpose. It doesn't have a purpose outside of God's world. This was what God summoned the prophet to the mountain top to tell him. That the moment you begin to obey my laws and to keep my commandments, you will become different. Can you see? Can you see the fact that because our God is holy, we cannot but be holy if we want to relate with that God. And the entire idea of sanctification is the procedure that God puts in place to make us holy in view of the fact that we don't have the ability to make ourselves holy. As we go on in the lecture, you will find that every attempt, because religion comes into the rescue too, and when I say religion, I'm talking about the attempts that man is making in order to achieve conformity, such an attempt is an insult to God and it is like filthy rags because you don't have the capacity whatsoever to attain to the standard of holiness. But we have to deal with a God that is holy and because of that it must be known that every aspect of our lives is going to be impacted by the fact that we want to do business with the Holy God. He said, if you keep my commandments, he said, you remember how I delivered you from the land of captivity. I bore you on eagle's wings. That means it's a good thing for me to be in your life. Hallelujah. I bore you, how? On eagle's wings. It means that it's in your interest for you to have me by your side. I can break the, the rules to ensure you find deliverance. I can, I can turn the tables to, to ensure you have an escape route. Your life will not end suddenly if you have me by your side. I, I, I bore you literally on eagle's wings. Hallelujah. Now that you know that I... I'm indispensable, and you are likely to wander into treacherous territory and circumstances without my presence. It is needful for me to also reveal to you what it will take to maintain my presence around your life. You will need to subscribe to my laws. And when you begin to subscribe to my laws, what my laws will do is that they will make you different. Somebody say different. They will make you distinct. You will not look like other nations. So any man, any woman that is operating under the government of God becomes distinct, becomes different from other people. And the difference will be so loud, so evident, 
that everyone will see it. Hallelujah. We are not saying you become another man. What we are saying is that you become a different man. Not another, but a different man. He said, you become a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Even though all the earth is mine, you will become a peculiar treasure. Other nations will look to you and wonder how you have become such a personality. You will be a reference point among men. You will be a spectacle among the nations just because you decide to subscribe to my laws. When you look at this presentation, you begin to have an insight into the vision that God had for his people. It means that if I decide to subscribe to God and to walk in the light of the laws of God, I am already separate from my generation. Hallelujah. If I decide to subscribe to the ideals of God, I have already become separate. And what I'm, are you here with me? What I'm talking about here is not, is not a high Christian standard. It's just a normal Christian standard. to preach in Lagos some time ago and I saw some ministers of the gospel hooked up in so much compromise that the compromise had renewed their minds. And the moment I came into their midst, I just, I, you don't, you, there was no need for me to advertise. It was obvious that I was not in their league. I was different. Not because I was saying I'm different. You know, you know because I became different because I am different. I was not making any advertisement whatsoever. I was just operating under the laws of God and I was what? Different. One of the pastors in Lagos was wondering why I was hitting hard on immorality and things like fornication and adultery and uncleanness. He was Wondering because he, he, he said, <laughs> oh my God, so many pastors in Lagos have side cheek. So what are you talking about? He doesn't know that his mind has been recalibrated to accept corruption. So instantly, because he has that disposition, guess what will happen? He cannot be my friend because, you know, there's no, he's unequal yoking. He was desperate to be my friend. Desperate, so desperate. But you see, he couldn't walk. The reason is because, not because I'm trying to prove that I'm something. It's just that I am different. Do you understand? Now, holiness is not something, it's not a microphone you take to um, Benway Link's motor park and then you, you shout, I am holy! I am. If you have gone to that level, you need psychiatric help. You need help. It's not, you don't climb the mountain top and try to advertise yourself. It is not, oh my God. If you are under the influence of the laws of God, the Bible says that the very laws of God that constrain you and stop you from being like other nations has already pedestaled you to be a peculiar treasure, an envy among the people. Envy among the people. I went to one country and there was this pastor that was saying, Oh, he wants to meet me, wants to meet me before I came. So when I noticed the pastor was in the meeting, the pastor came for the meeting I was preaching with the hope that we will meet at the end of the meeting. So when I was sure he was there, I took a moment to talk about myself, my ideals, the things I 
believe, you know? Is that not how you make friends? You tell the person, I don't believe in fornication. I'm a child of God. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And God has warned that if I defile this body, I'll become his enemy and he will destroy me. That's what the Bible says. Are you there now? So, the first thing I said, as I was delivering that, it was not the Lord that was leading me to say it, it was me that said it. Because that's a nation where pastors invite people because the people have the ability to raise offering. So if you are weak in mobilizing funds, you are not needed in that terrain. So, I made it clear that I am not one of the preachers that has the grace to raise money. I raise people, I don't raise money. Hallelujah. So I will never come and say, um, calm down. If you can give one million, stand up. I will never do that. Maybe when I'm gone, you guys might do it, but if I'm still here, it will never happen. Do we have needs? Yes, we do. You have seen us manage needs before. Say, okay, these are the needs we have. If God is laying it upon your heart, no manipulation because the Bible gave us a regulation for giving that all giving should be willing. No one should be under pressure, no matter the project that we are embarking upon. It must be free will. Everybody must be at liberty. And, and we must not put anyone on display just because the person gave more. That should be a secret between the person and God. The fact that we are administering things doesn't mean that we should put the person on the platform. Because I hope you know we don't have money the same way. Some people have more than others. But the fact that you have more than others and you are even giving it doesn't make you a spiritual person. So we don't put you on the platform and give you a title just because you, have, you are giving Many people watching me now on, on the internet are more desperate, more dangerous givers than we that are sitting at it. And we don't know them. We that work in the administrative area, we can pick a few names. We know some guys that give heavy sums frequently. At least I can, because we work in the administrative area. But we'll not come here to tell you that. Because giving is, a, is an act of faith. It's a commitment that somebody is making to God. Even we that use the resources that come to accomplish what God has asked us to do, we do it with fear and trembling, with all prudence, because we are aware of the fact that the money was not given to us. It was given to who? To God. Oh, and I don't need to tell you that. We are also aware that because we administered God's, God's funds, we will give account. Ministry is serious. So I told, I made it clear in my message. I looked for a very good spot in that message and made a declaration of faith. And my declaration was that I don't raise money. What do I do? I raise people. The moment I struck that, there was no need for the man to meet me at the end of the service. Because the purpose for which he, he must have watched my videos and seen that I'm a gifted person. So, and, and normally, in raising money, you sell gifts so that you can raise money. You manifest gifts and say, okay, the Holy Ghost is saying something. And then everybody is under pressure. Emotions are, 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 are beefed up. And in the, in the euphoria of the moment, you steal from people and they'll be smiling. I said, I don't do that kind of business. I'm a different kind of minister. We believe God to make our supplies available. We are men of faith. We believe that God can do it and we will wait. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It is not our agenda. God is more desperate to do it than we can ever be. It is very easy for you to know that the preacher is faithless when you see his ways. These techniques have been put in place just because the man does not know God personally. So he cannot trust him for supply. We've been 
we learned God through scriptures and prayer for years until he began to honor our faith. So we are not thieves. The moment I said that, the man hopped out. While the power of God was still intense, he hopped out of the area. There was no need for us to have an after talk because we are different. <laughs> oh my God. Please tell your neighbor I'm different. I'm different. I'm deep. So when you function under the laws of God, what happens is that you become a peculiar treasure. You become different from your neighbor. You will find your neighbor doing things that you know you cannot do because you are regulated by the laws of God. Dealing with a God that is holy is going to affect every aspect of our lives. Even your dealings with people, they don't notice that you are different. Then you are common. Someone comes to you, a guy comes to you, and in his own understanding, the way to consolidate a relationship is through sexual intercourse. And then you say, hey, <laughs> we don't do such here. Then you wonder, say, you must be a secondary school girl. I say, well, if that's your description of who I am, uh, then you are not, you are not well vast because I'm different. In fact, the moment the guy begins to demand such, you just know that he's not in your class. He can't keep covenant. It's a proof that is different from you. So you can't continue that discussion. It's on the basis of difference that that, that difference that you, that, that you have become becomes what screens out people from your life. They are naturally screened because you are different from them. And that's why if you are waging war to make friends here and there, you are, not, you are common. Because when I became different, I tried to make friends. I now discovered I was different. So I now wait and allow God to give me friends. Because God knows the friends that are like me, that share the same values. A thief cannot be my friend. Someone will come here and say this here, and then when he goes out, he will say something contrary. Ah, oh, no, no, that's not who I am. Tell you the truth. In the morning, and you can verify before the sun goes down. When I sleep on my bed, I know that if I die in my sleep, I will appear before Jesus. It's not a man like me who threaten with death. If God allows you to kill me, you have helped me. You help me. You have helped me. You have shortened my body. Every day I live, we say, you know what I carry? On a daily basis? You don't have any idea. Many of you see me with my <laughs> sky blue suit. You say, my God, this guy is just <laughs> a solid guy. Oh. If I exchange my life with yours for two weeks, you will be in intensive care unit in the teaching hospital on life support. So if he allows you, you have helped me. Unfortunately, he will not allow you because there's so much. He will, as you are thinking of how to bring harm to me, we will visit you in the night. I know that. I know. Ooh, I don't want to tell you stories. Mm. I don't want to tell you stories because you will now say, Kai, I'm a dangerous man. You see? Mm. Let's leave that. I also want you to know that because of your commitment to the laws of God, God is jealous about you. I just, I want you to know that. You know, I told you I was in a meeting sometime. So a, a young lady in the congregation 
felt I was proud. Like that. So she insulted me in the congregation. She became dumb instantly in that, in the congregation. When we finished service, the ushers brought her. I said, oh, did I touch her before she became dumb? I wanted the chief way to escape so that she would tarry in that situation. You know, I'm not exactly like Jesus. I'm trying to be like him. In my own mind, let her tarry like this for 15 years. Kame suke baka yabanta. The ushers begged, they begged, they begged. Then she, she could not speak, so she would write and say, I am sorry from my heart. Then she would touch her heart like <laughs> So I now began to beg Jesus, began to beg Jesus and beg Jesus and beg Jesus. They became intense. In, the, in that atmosphere of intensity, her tongue was loosed. And she began to speak it. If I don't know anything, I know that Jesus is jealous about me badly. Bad. You know, some years ago, a man pointed me, say, "You are anointed. Me too. I'm anointed." So don't. Ah, he went down. You, I don't know how you know God, though, but I'm different. I am a peculiar treasure. I am, have been raised so that nations will learn the ways of God undiluted. So I, I am a treasure. That's what God said. That's what you become when you function under the laws of God. Please hear me and hear me well. If you are dealing with the holy God, that your adventure will affect every area of your life. It will affect who you can marry. It will affect what school your children can attend. It will affect every... The fact that you have money, okay, you have money to take the children to Spain, to take them to Algeria. It is not the money that determines where they go. It is who you have become by dealing with God, that you gain the discernment that is needed on how to order every aspect of your life. That's where your wisdom will derive from. That's where your understanding will derive from. Are you still with me? So these were the words, the very words that God sent Moses to break to his people. That I have a plan for you, an ordination that is beyond everything that you can imagine for yourself. But you must be foolish enough to subscribe to my laws. My laws will have to govern you. My laws will have to restrain and restrict you. The reason why it is so is because I am a holy God. So the laws of God will become your wisdom, will become the reason why you have become the man that you now are. Your relationship with the Holy Ghost will become the reason why you have become the woman that you now are. You, you were not such a woman some years down the, the road, but when you came to him and you came under his government, you became different. Are you still with me? Different. Totally different. Totally different. All right. So this was a vision that, it was a grand vision that uh, God was revealing to his people. But in the book of Deuteronomy, I'd like to take you down the road and show you a few things. Are you there? All right, so let's do Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy Moses made a discovery in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30, 3, 0, not 1, 3.
Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 5 and verse 6. This is a personal discovery that Moses made. Moses was the one that was given the law. Moses was the one, the prophet, that came to receive the vision that God had for the children of Israel, that if you guys can function under the influence of my commandments, my intention is to make you a peculiar treasure among all nations, among all people. So this is a few years down the road, and Moses is back to give us an insight. This insight Moses did not have previously. He just stumbled upon it, and he wants to share it with us. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. Verse 6 is my emphasis. And the Lord thy God will circumcise your heart. Stay with me. <laughs> Moses discovered, because first of all, God gave the Ten Commandments. Then when other issues began to rise up and people began to fault, they were, they were, they were, um, they could not live up to the standards of the commandments. Uh, he, there were all that sub laws that were now crystallized to open up all the gray areas and to know how to open to obey the basic commandments. And laws kept coming, and the guys kept breaking the laws, and more modifications of laws kept coming in, and the guys kept breaking the laws until in the book of Deuteronomy which is the last book of the Torah, Moses came to an understanding of the fact that except the Lord himself circumcises the heart of man, it will be impossible for man to live to the standards of God's law. You see, this is based on experience. It means that the epicenter of our capacity for rebellion is anchored on the heart of man. You stay with me, you stay with me. We would stay on this matter because I had to do the whole of Leviticus today. I had to do some of Exodus to get, I had to do so many researches today so that I can bring out this matter and show you precept upon precept in a sequence that will lead you into victory. So that you will see the mechanism that God has put in place to make us holy. There's a mechanism. Are you there? All right. So Moses came to the understanding of the fact that except God circumcises our heart, it will be impossible for us to live up to the standards of the laws of God. It doesn't matter how many modifications we're trying to bring to the table with our human effort, with our tact and skill, with our learning, and with our dexterity. We are going to fall face flat. That the challenge with humankind it is, is not their inability to comprehend the laws of God. The challenge with humankind is more far-reaching. There is a, 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 a premise, an epicenter of rebellion that is seated upon his heart, and until that heart experiences a change, it will be impossible for humankind to live up to the demands of the laws of God. That's where Moses ended. Okay? Now, you see, the reason why I went to Leviticus, I went to, I wanted to know the conclusion of many matters. The, in the next lecture that we come for, I will show you the story of Leviticus. And then I will lead you to the conclusion of the story of Leviticus. If I lead you to the conclusion of these stories, you'll be able to understand the ministry of Jesus. 
Because the ministry of Jesus, the Old Testament will always leave you with questions. And I can show you from more than 12 windows the questions that will be left from the Old Testament perspective. Because the things that God promised them in the Old Testament, they will try to achieve it and they will see an inability to attain to the expectation. Then Jesus now comes to the rescue. So I would like you to see the plug-in from Jesus. Are you there now? As we journey, then I will show you the first scope of sanctification. Next lecture, I'll show you the second scope of sanctification. Then, subsequently, I can now show you how to walk in holiness. Then you will see that walking in holiness uh, is a bit different from what you have taught. Uh, may the Lord give us understanding. So let me not jump before myself. Let's, let's just go one step at a time. This are the statements of Jesus. The statements of Jesus seem to confirm the discovery of Moses. Like he makes this statement in the book of Matthew chapter 15, verse 19. Matthew chapter 15, verse number 19, if you have the scripture. Matthew 15, 19. Oh my God, who is this man on the screen that cannot give me my scripture? Okay, I'm no longer working with you. Matthew, no, 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 15, verse 19, the person slept off. This is Jesus, because Moses came to the conclusion of the fact that except the heart of man is circumcised, he cannot live up to the requirements of the laws of God. And we see Jesus even going deeper when he said that it's not what goes into a man that defiles a man, but what comes out of a man that defiles him. Then he shows us that the epicenter of man's corruption is tied to his heart. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murder and adulteries, and fornication, and thefts, false witness and blasphemy. Hallelujah. Now, I want to make a statement, but it's not a joke. So we have to agree that you will not laugh before I, I'll find the boldness to make the statement. Are we in agreement of the, in this? So I took a fast and during the course of this fast I was not expecting to go to the toilet because I, I, there, there was there is not supposed to be anything for which I may need to use the toilet but somehow at some point I received the call of nature when I visited the place and uh, the product that came out, and I asked myself, where, where did this thing end? How come it was a strange product? That's the same way you would deny the product that comes out of your heart. You don't know it. It's too, it's too corrupt for you to know it. You, you will deny that. Sky, no. This me, like this, this pro no, no, you will deny the product. Jesus said, you see, <coughs> hallelujah. There was no other way I could illustrate that. That was how I had to resort to that example. For out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts. Who is, can you be, can you be sincere today? Have you ever desired that somebody died, actually? Huh? You know why my hand is up? I'm also guilty on that. So as pious and sanctimonious as your pastor, there are people that have offended you before say, I will lie if this guy, guy. That was the...
That's why evil thoughts, that's the seat, the very seat of rebellion and corruption has been traced. So Moses' postulations and Moses' findings have been seen to be accurate because Jesus deals with the same matter and says that the source of evil thoughts is the heart, the source of all murders. See, first of all, it starts with the intangible. And everything that eventually becomes an action that is considered an abomination, first of all, existed in the heart as thoughts. Have you heard, have you heard the scripture says, out of the abundance? No, 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 that's not the scripture. As a man thinketh in his heart, so you see, so your heart has thinking capacity. The true evaluation of who you are will be found in the frequency of your thought. So when God wants to know you, he doesn't check your, record, your, your report card, what your lecturers say you did and what you scored in your examination. What he does is that he looks directly upon your heart. Because as a man thinketh, so God can sniff your thoughts. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So when someone comes to marry you, you need to labor for you to enter into what is in his heart. Do you like people that are tall? The person that Satan will use to destroy your destiny will be tall. You must have a way of navigating into the person's heart to see the heart and to know it for yourself by witness of the Holy Spirit. Give me my scripture. It says, For out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man let me stop there. These are the things which defile the man. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For the abundance, for the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. So one of the ways by which the content of the heart can be brought out is through speaking. So we don't take what you say lightly. That's one of the opportunities for you to know the heart of a man. And if you are a wise man, you can... You can occasion speaking by asking questions. You know the Bible says counsel in the heart of a man is like deep waters. And a man of understanding, he draws it. Oh, young lady that wants to get married, there are some questions, if you are wise, that you can ask and you can force the inner content of a man to come up. As far as Jesus is concerned, the heart is your hidden treasure house. And in that your hidden treasure house, that's where your essence resides. That is the seat of corruption that is in humankind that makes him incapable of approximating to the expectations of God. So you will find out that the solution that God prescribes for humankind is heart-based. The first solution, the first thing God puts in place in order to advance us on a path of sanctification is a surgery on the heart. Are you there? Because there's no way you can wash a man clean as long as you are washing him externally. According to Jesus, you need to wash him from inside. When you wash him from inside, 
you will discover that even outside will become clean. So the first mechanism that God puts in place to achieve our sanctification is a heart-based mechanism. So we are going to look at this mechanism of which I speak. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 1 to 3. Heart-based mechanism. Heart-based mechanism. All right? So this is the first step because we said that sanctification is to make holy. So the first step that God takes concerning our lives to make us holy is a heart-based surgery. And this is the first step. Just so that you know it's not a new thing, it was captured in the prophetic words of the prophets of old. And they bore this kind of witness. Okay, before we do Jeremiah, can we do Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26? This is the solution to man's challenge. He said, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. Hallelujah. This is the first attempt of God. What he did is that he discovered that our old heart is synchronized with Satan. Our old heart is synchronized with the ways of darkness. Our old heart is stained, it is mutated, and it is tethered to the ways of the devil. So the first move God takes is to give us another heart. Another heart that is tuned to a different frequency. Another heart that is tuned to God. A heart that is yielded to God. That was the first process. First point in the process of making us holy that God puts in place. And I'm going to show you from other scriptures so that you will not be in doubt whatsoever. Once you get this first process, then we'll now enter into the second process. That one is more technical. But you will see the workings of God and all the things that God will deploy. And the reason why God will squander such resources is because he being a holy God cannot stand an unholy people. And that's the whole contradiction in the book of Leviticus. That's the whole contradiction we see all through the history of the people of God. They fell from God's favor again and again because they could not live up to the standards of God's law. And Moses was able to reveal that the reason for this is that there is a heart that has suffered mutation. And so in bringing us into newness and giving us another chance to live and to function with the Holy God, what the prophet prophesied as God's policy direction for that matter is to give unto us a new heart and what? And a new spirit. We are going to look at this. A new heart and a new spirit. This is the prophetic rendering of the exercise that God will do in order to have people that can be separated unto him. With the old heart that we had, we were separated unto Satan. But with this new heart that he has given, the possibilities of being separated unto God exist. Another prophetic scripture that we need to look upon is the one I just recommended. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 1 to 3. 
before we go to the New Testament and find two critical scriptures that speaks about everything that I'm trying to explain. In Jeremiah chapter 31, the Bible says, At the same time, saith the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Now, if you notice, the first statement there is at the same time. It means there is a particular time when God's vision will now be established. That means in this current time, I cannot be this people's God. In this current time, I cannot be their friend. In this current time, I cannot be around them because their lives contradict my nature that I cannot compromise. So he gave the prophet a vision. And the prophet prophesied according to that vision and said that at the same time, saith the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. The, the next question to ask is, what changed? Thus, saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. Oh my God, I need to give you another scripture. Give me a moment. Let me get you the scripture of interest. I have uh, Jeremiah chapter 31, verse number. Okay, can you give me Jeremiah chapter 31 verse, verse 31? 31 to 33. Okay, are you there? So for behold the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, said the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts. That's number one. And I will write it in their hearts. That means this their inward parts. We have inward parts, then we have heart. Are you there? And when I do this, and will be I will no longer be ashamed to be their God, and there shall be my people. So the, the, the um, procedure that God puts in place in order for him to have a man that can deal with him, a holy God, is a heart-based procedure. God's first attempt at sanctifying us, at making us holy, to deal with him that is a holy God is, was a heart-based treatment. And he says that he's going to write his laws in our inward parts. Now, I'm supposed at this point to, to show us a diagram. A diagram that captures all your inward parts. But I will show us that diagram in our next lecture. All right? There's a diagram that you need to see. This diagram is the closest diagram we can get from the revelation of scriptures to reveal your inward parts. So I'm going to come up with a diagram. I, I just hope that uh, our brethren up there can, uh, when I come with it, I don't know how you will do it. Okay, maybe you scan it and then you will now project it 
and then we'll use that projected diagram to talk about your inward parts. And we'll attach scriptures to it so that you will know that all of everything you will see in that diagram is a product of the Bible. And then we'll now discuss in detail how God writes his laws in your inward parts, not in your brain, not in your mind. The chemistry you studied from Benicet University is in your mind. The, the medicine you studied from the university is in your mind, but God goes beyond your mind. He goes to the, your inward parts. As you will come to realize when we begin the study, uh, you will find out that the inward parts he's talking about is the parts of your spirit man. So we will label all the parts of your spirit man and then we'll show you how God is committed to making you live holy. How many of you can say the truth? There was a day you made up your mind that you wanted to sin. You had concluded it. It was a decision that you have reached. And then when you were on the journey towards this sin, the laws of God inside now began to trouble you. You couldn't accomplish your intention. How many of you have ever been there before? So I'm going to show you that inward, that inward arrangement and you will see God's commitment to make us walk in holiness, to make us remain different, to make us remain separate, to make us remain distinct, to make us remain that peculiar treasure. There are efforts that God deploys in order to ensure this. So that if by any means, when you got to the place, you actually sinned, it is not because God was not there. You had to walk, to walk, in order for you to, 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 to sin. And that's why it's called the works of the flesh. It will take effort to overcome the resistance inside. Are you there? The, re the resistance inside is so powerful that if you are not willing to walk, that resistance inside will ensure that you don't end up achieving what you set out to achieve. You already set out to achieve it, but the energy to achieve it was not available because there was a system that was locked on your inward parts that was at work. Are you there? If you eventually succeeded in accomplishing that sin, you had to rise above the resistance and the Bible calls that effort walk. That means it's no longer natural for you to sin. You have to walk. You have to. Because there's a system that makes it natural for you to reject sin. And all of that system was put in place by God, not by you. Because he is the God that makes us holy. I will take it step by step, then you will discover that the life, the work of holiness is, is very, very easy. It's just cooperating with the external, the internal in infrastructure. You are cooperating with it to resist the external infrastructure. The moment you have in your heart that I want to live right, you will live right because of this infrastructure. Because if the thing that wants to defeat you, are you there? Yes, Does not defeat you in your soul. It cannot defeat you on the ground. And in order for your soul not to be defeated, there is a robust infrastructure that God has built within you that rises against every attempt of the devil to bring an advertisement that can attract your attention. I will show you the steps. And this Steps I'm telling you are things that I've practiced in my own personal life for so many years. And on the strength of the success that I have had in walking with him, I will share my own testimony as proof that the things that are written in that scripture are true. Are you still with me? There are some dimensions of anointing that we carry. If you don't walk in holiness, God will not even consider you. There are so many things that you will miss. Because the idea of 
making you walk in holiness is so that you can be a peculiar treasure. People will look at you and envy you. Holiness is not, is not, is not something that makes you outdated, that makes you irrelevant, that makes you out of sync with relevance in your time. No, 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 no. You got it wrong. You got it wrong. In fact, walking in holiness guarantees that you will become a spectacle that people will desire to be like. Hallelujah. I have seen ministers of the gospel that were champion people with grace. They fell into sin. I've, they, are, they are not dead though. I have I've seen that the glory of God left them. They are no longer peculiar. They are common. I don't want to be like that. I want to be a shining star for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. I want to be a shining star. I want to go far with God. If God says his vision concerning my life is that I'm supposed to be a peculiar treasure, oh my God, I cannot desire more than God desires for me. And the, the, the wonderful thing about the whole arrangement is that God is willing to deploy resources to ensure that I am made holy. So the holiness that, 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 that oozes out of my life is not a product of my effort, even though your effort is required, as I will show you. But your effort will be nothing if God's effort were not there in the first place. Because the calling into which we are called requires that we take root so that we become grounded. In order for you to take root and become grounded, your own effort in the direction of the current of grace is needed. So when you hear someone, a grace preacher, tell you that Jesus has done everything and you don't need to do nothing, he's speaking, what, we, what he's doing is that he's the name of what he's preaching is a doctrine of demons. Demons have been teaching that doctrine since ancient time in order to sell the product of lasciviousness, which is an opposition to that which God wants to build in your life. I've seen the hand of God in this my little life, the hand of God. Well, I was right there in Scotland. And I began to pray for people with deaf ears. And then when I finished praying for them, there were people were celebrating their testimonies. And an Indian woman brought her son. Her son had not heard. And she said, the preacher said, deaf people will hear. And this guy was born deaf and he has not heard yet. So what she did is that, you know how we organize healing meetings. We only call the people that are healed to come out. She didn't follow the protocol. She brought her deaf boy, and the guy was deaf and dumb. Now, in my walk with God, I was privileged to see the glory of Jesus. Jesus came to my room a few times. And one of those times that he came to my room, he came with the fullness of his glory. And when, when I, what I mean by that is your human eyes cannot look upon that glory. So I knew that I would be blind. Something told me I would be blind. So what I did was that I put my face on the ground when he passed by my side. When he passed by my side, some of the light from him, all right, beamed and fell on my body. That light that fell on my body was the presence of God that stayed on me for three days. I've seen that glory before. In the face of that glory, the guy's deafness was nothing for me to consider. You know, if you were the one, you'll be afraid and say, hey, what if he doesn't hear? No, no, no. If you know this glory I'm talking about, you, in the face of that glory, you cannot consider deafness is anything. And I prayed for the guy and back, commanded the, the, the deafness spirit to come out. The, he didn't come out. I prayed for him again. Nothing happened to him. I spoke in tongues. You know, if you do it two times and it doesn't work, you, you know what? What you need is, you need more insight. Oh, you are not with me. It doesn't mean it's impossible. It means you need to yield a little more to understand Huh? So I began to speak in tongues. It means there's something I'm missing. And the Holy Ghost must tell me. And as I was speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, he told me, turn to the boy now and speak. 
So I, I turned and I commanded the deaf spirit, come up. The guy started hearing. I commanded the, the dumb spirit, come up. The guy began to speak and began to hear at the same time. <laughs> began to, oh, we wanted to stop the meeting. I said, in the name of Jesus, people were already crying. We couldn't do anything. I just left the stage. You, you know when something breaks and uh, that was the first, do you know that was the first time some people saw a real miracle in their life? The white man that was there, the Scottish man that was in the place, he, he almost took off. I, I asked his son, tell, is that your father? Tell him this is the work of Jesus. Like he should not. I had to address him for him to, he wanted to escape from the, the place. <laughs> there are dimensions of grace you will never touch if you walk around with filthy garments. Holiness, it is a call to be a peculiar treasure. That in your generation there was no man like you. That's the call. It's not a call to be wretched, a call to be sanctimonious and pious. That's not the calling. It's a calling to be a reference point, a peculiar treasure, someone that God can identify with publicly. Even me as a small preacher, there are preachers in Nigeria I will not identify with. When I see them, I, I escape. Let, let no picture be taken if you are in close proximity with such an individual. Because I will need to do the three days teaching here to convince you that I have nothing to do with the man. This is me, a small preacher. Talk more of God. God will not identify with a man that, that doesn't wear the cloak of holiness. He wants you to, to be a peculiar treasure. Do you know when I gave that prophecy in Kenya about the president? That is the president now. Kenyans, even Kenyans didn't believe me. You know, I'm not a politician, so I don't know their politics. According to the political permutations of Kenya, that thing I said was foolishness. And I don't have time to go into it because some analysts now came to me later and say, ah, we know that uh, you preach, but uh, they gave me an analysis. Even me, myself, I became afraid. Those words, it was Jesus that visited me in the night that morning at 3 a.m. to give me the words I, I prophesied. If angels come to me and they are whispering, and they are, they are whispering, all right? I will not come here to prophesy what I heard from angels. It can change. But if Jesus comes to me to speak, go anywhere. It will come to I have walked in it. That's why I don't prophesy every day. Say, this will happen. No, it's not true. Jesus doesn't speak every day like that. Doesn't speak every day like that. When that prophecy came to pass, the next time I went to Kenya, when I came out of the airport, some people wanted to lie on the ground for me to step on. And you know, you know the way I stop those people? I tell them that if you go down, me too, I will go down. Then the whole world will see, they will be confused. <laughs> but the reason why they wanted to go down was because they considered me a peculiar treasure. God will not identify with you if you don't wear the cloak of holiness. And if he identifies with you, you will be a shining star. A call, the call to holiness is not a call to reproach. It's not human-made piety and sanctimony. <laughs> Are you with me? It's a call to be a peculiar treasure. Oh, I've seen a little glory. I've seen small, seen small. I've seen small glory. One airport, we entered one airport. When the immigration officer saw me, they shouted, Hey! Because I don't know what, I was wondering what I did like that. And I've never been there before. 
The moment they shouted, they took me to an office and gave me tea to be drinking. I didn't even know where they took my passport to stamp. When we came to the customs to screen our bags and check, the moment we came, ah, the, the custom people just, just uh, looted. So they, they didn't screen our bag. I said, what is going on here? I went to another country again. When we got to the airport, the police people began to guard me from the airport. Police. When we came to the desk of the immigration person to stamp in, when he saw police, he, could do, he was confused. And if you see me with those police people, you will still see me as you know me. It's not as if I'm doing like this. Because what makes me peculiar is not the color of my suit, it's that God is with me. God. God is with me. God. God is with me. Now, 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 do you think, are you with me? Huh. Do you think that if God is with you, you'll be broke? No, I know this truth. I know it. I know it. I know it. Someone came from one nation, came here, came to this place. In order to encourage me to be coming to their nation to preach, he gave me a house. He said, Take, see, I have a house in, and I know that place in that nation. That's the most costly estate in the entire nation. I know that place. I've stayed there before. I, do you know what it means to build a house? Think of somebody building one, not in, in Urukum. On this continent called Africa, if I'm not mistaken, that estate is the most costly land in the entire Africa. That estate. He said, consider coming to our country. You have a house there now. So I have to go there. Your call to walk in holiness is God trying to make you shine. So I will not sell that treasure for cheap things of this age. I know the contract God has with me is greater than any pleasure I can get from any woman anywhere. I will not throw away. It will take work to do it because God has built an infrastructure in my heart that desires God making it very extremely, extremely difficult for me to, to deliver upon an intention to offend God. The intention might be there, but the ability to deliver upon it because the system God has put in place captures not just my heart, but it captures the inward parts. I've seen a little glory. And I know that what I've seen is not the best that God can do. So I sign up for this journey. I sign up to be brighter, to shine, to blaze much more in the rivers of holiness so that I can carry and express much more of his glory. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. When somewhere people began to give money, give money, until I say, I won't take it again. It's, it's not, it's too much money. Too much money. Too. Okay, at least, um, Evangelist Philip can be a witness. We went somewhere. People brought envelopes of money. I, I told him, Evangelist, drive off. He said they are bringing money. I said there is money in the front. They, don't collect all of this one. You will still have it. It's, leave. Move. There's money in front. This is not, this not all. Go. There's money in front. The people that brought the money were wondering, what, man, what kind of creature is this? What man, who rejects money? 
if you know what I see, I see Jesus in his splendor. Everything, all nations will come and pay homage to Jesus. So if I carry Jesus, men will pay homage. Men will pay. Men will pay homage. Men will pay homage. Who told you that your call to holiness is an adventure of piety and sanctimony? Oh, you were taught wrong. <laughs> Shall we make you what? A peculiar treasure. Peculiar treasure. Peculiar treasure. Peculiar treasure. Among all people, if they put people together, you cannot be mistaken for the masses. You are different. You are a peculiar person. That's what holiness does to you. It sets you apart. You are in your own class. When they finish categorizing everybody, they will need to create another class to accommodate your kind. We are not of this world. The Bible spoke about men of whom the world was not worthy. They were blazing in the fires of conviction and commitment to God. Oh, their generation was not worthy of them. The fire by which they burned was not common fire. It was the flames that came from above. There were men of whom the world was not worthy. Be weary of any pastor trying to preach the message of grace to get people into indulgence. He's a messenger of Satan. I have walked with God long enough and with the scriptures to know the sound of the voice of God. Oh my God. Do you accept to be a peculiar treasure? Do you accept that God has something in mind for which he beckons on us to come into the higher calling of the Puritans? I will not walk in darkness. Oh my God. I will not walk in darkness. I will not walk in darkness. Can you make those proclamations in your spirit? I will not walk in iniquity. My garment will not be stained. I will walk beyond the reproach of wrinkles and spots. I am called to be a peculiar treasure among all people. I am called to shine in the light of his glory. I am called to be different. I am called to be separate. I am called to journey with him. Oh Jesus. Why can you help him with that song there? Shaking our glory. Shaking our glory. Shaking our glory. You are holy. You are holy. Shaking our I will bask. I will bask as a Puritan. We have been called unto holiness because our God is holy. He is holy. So, friends, I like to be in our Amen. Oh, oh, sakumbre hiketa buko dali. Let my desires, let my affection continually be set on things that are both where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. He wants to make you shine. That's why he called you to walk the paths of holiness. He wants to make you glow. With grace, you are holy, you are holy. Shekinah, 
Shekinah glory, Shekinah. Shekinah glory. <laughs> I am not of this world. You are home. Yes, you are. You are home. Oh, Shekinah glory, Shekinah. Shekinah glory, Shekinah. Brighter than the sun, you are beautiful. Darkness tremble at your light. You are holy. You are holy. You are brighter than the sun, Father Lord. Oh, you are beautiful. Darkness tremble at your light. We declare you holy. You are holy. Shekinah glory. Shekinah glory. Shekinah glory. Shekinah glory. Yes, you are. You are holy. You are holy. Shekinah glory, Shekinah glory, Shekinah glory, Shekinah glory. Yes, you are. You are holy. You are holy. You are brighter than the sun. You are brighter than the sun. Beautiful, you are beautiful. Darkness tremble at your light. Darkness tremble at your light. You are holy, yes you are. You are holy. You are brighter than the sun. You are brighter than the sun. You are beautiful, you are beautiful. Darkness tremble at your light. You are holy, yes you are holy, oh Shekinah glory, Shekinah glory, Shekinah glory, Shekinah glory, Shekinah glory, you are holy, you are holy, Shekinah glory,
Can you reach out? Just pick your Bible. Pick your Bible. And let's dive into the book of Romans. Chapter 6, beginning from verse 20. A call to holiness is not a demeaning call. You heard wrong. If what you got from it is an attempt to diminish you. No. See, that's the way you become a peculiar treasure. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? Sin does not produce anything that is glorious. The end of sin is shame. Shame. I know you don't want shame. I know it. I know you don't want shame. If you sin, you want to hide it because if it comes out, it brings shame. The end, I, I studied. I studied the scripture. I said, my God, it's not even a logically thinking person will not go this path. Because you don't want shame. The end of it is shame. For the end of those things is death. After you experience shame in life, then you now experience condemnation before God. Who, who, does, who does this kind of trade? Who will accept this bargain? It doesn't matter how long our generation, the spirit of the age, tries to make sin glorious. You need to, the, the journalists need to follow the practitioners to their houses and you will see that they bask in shame. No one wants to be ashamed. The call to walk in holiness is God's way of delivering us from shame and causing us to stand on the pedestal. But now being made free from sin, ye became servants to God, separated unto God, holy. So the greatest enemy against being ultimately separated to God, to serve God, to become a creature in God's hands. You see? And the fruit of that life of being separated to God is what? Holiness. And the end product is what? Everlasting life. So we have two equations here. We have shame, perpetual shame leading to death. The other day, they brought a child that resulted from a transaction. And the father saw the child and swore before the idol that I don't know this child. You know why he swear? Because he's ashamed. He's ashamed. Meanwhile, that child was the only person there when he was about to die. He didn't know how to repent. Are you with me? I don't want shame. Then at the end of the shame, of the life of shame, it now leads to death, separation from God. That deal is not a good deal. But now that I've become a servant of God, the fruit I bear is a fruit of perpetual separation unto God, which is holiness. And the end of that walk is what? Is everlasting life. I choose this one. Oh my God. Can you be bold about your choice tonight? Oh my. I'm a root everlasting life. I will not branch by the side to consider the products that this age have to offer. I am a root that life eternal. I like that deal. 
I will not fall by the wayside. I will not be hijacked. I will not be manipulated. God wants to deliver me from shame. He wants to pedestal me as a star in his kingdom. There that are wise, the Bible says, that shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many unto righteousness like the stars forever. Psycho Brisco Fille Mendele. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 la 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 you are holy you are holy la 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 You are holy You are holy La 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 You are holy. You are holy. La 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 la. La 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 la. La 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 la. You are holy. You are holy. La 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 la. La 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 You are holy You are holy La 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 You are holy. La 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 la. La 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 la. La 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 la. You are holy. You are holy. La 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 la. La 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 In a moment of time before I step down from the stage, you want to make a deliberate decision. Is there something holding you back in sin? You can break ties with it and nothing will happen. Nothing. You can walk away. You can walk away right now. It doesn't. Oh my God. Finished preaching in Lagos. Counseling people. Came back to the hotel by 10 p.m. in the night. Pastor Austin was there, our pastors. And they came and pleaded with me that I had to see one more person. I said, what? They pleaded. Brought a lady. We sat down. What's the problem? Beautiful young lady. You know what? She heard me preach in the conference and felt she needed to confess something. Okay, it's all right. What's the problem? She
she is living with a millionaire. That is in the same, the guy is sleeping with him, giving her millions of dollars, millions of money. So much so that the family were interested in her remaining there. Because when the money flows in, he says, okay, you can have this, you can have that, you know, and all of that. As she was telling the story, I was caught up in the spirit. Then I saw that she was about to be used for a sacrifice. And when I said it, and she had seen it in dreams twice, she shouted, who told you that Satan is, is out for your welfare? She said, now she doesn't have anything. I said, Go. die of hunger. You know, before you will see the hand of God, you must turn your back on sin and any advantage whatsoever you get from it. Die of hunger. And when I spoke those words, she found courage and cut off. Everybody in the Bible that say, if I die, I die, never die. Everyone that say, I go die, oh, they die before evening. If I die, I die. You can break the link. You can break the tie. You can refuse to benefit from sin. I called a preacher. I told him, this man you are bringing to your pulpit is an unclean man. You know what he told me? He said, um, we are not all... There's a word they used which is suggesting that we are extremists. He wants to benefit from the life of a man that is not right with God. He wants his ministry to benefit something from a life of a man that is not right with God. You know what? That's the sure way for that ministry to crash. I have lived long enough in the kingdom to know this. So he thought he was a smart guy. Let's benefit from his anointing. At least he's still anointed. And we don't agree with his life, but the anointing is from God. <laughs> you don't know that when you are ministering, you are transmitting the essence of your soul. Whenever I speak, they'll say, no, you are. Your own voice causes trouble. Many years, the Lord led me to the Bible. Many years. I studied it. Again and again and again. And so I couldn't deny what I found here. I thought that by saying it, I will be helping him. He felt I was an extremist. That I had an idealism that no longer exists. And he kept benefiting from it. Not knowing that he was signing off his relevance from our generation. I will walk in holiness. I will walk in righteousness. I don't matter. It doesn't matter how people see me, what they call me, the names they give me. Sometimes they say you are a Jew. If that's what it takes to walk in holiness, I, it's, it's a small price to pay. Because God has designed that I will be a peculiar treasure. He has designed it. There's no mockery of me you make now that will make me change my mind. I am, I, I am sold out. I'm lost in Jesus. So make those, those, those declarations tonight. You know, the, as you say it, it becomes strong in your heart. I am lost in Jesus. My life is in Jesus. I am hidden in Jesus. Satan has no place in me. He cannot sell his products around my life. I despise fornication. I despise adultery. I despise cheating. I am not a thief. I give life. I am a messenger of Jesus Christ. Oh! 
Oh! Oh! That your conviction might be deepened afresh tonight to stand for Jesus, to stand for righteousness. In a season where men are careless about these things, become that beacon of light, shining and basking in the grace of God. The Lord is about to visit our land. May he find you standing. May he find you rooted in the conviction of his holiness. I will not go astray. My sleep, my feet will not sleep. I will be standing erect. He has called me to glory. He has called me to virtue. To deal with the Holy God. I must myself be holy. I have no choice. There's no other way around it. I embrace what God is offering me. I embrace it. It doesn't matter who feels otherwise. My conviction is steadfast. Oh God. Kobe bero si komantelia. Endo bokoro si kobrekatalia. Mendo laboros kete mi kobandolo. Hey! Sukabaya. Es kompreske. Baga don't tell ya. Avemina kampedo. Es kobila kadia. And sin shall have no dominion over me. Elieto, come be mosike, cabres contamina cadia, precom polo, abaiso saminale, precatalabon sacataya. Maya bo sika berana sika. Maya bo bo santoria. Eli mama yete esko prenali barasko bampala ika bema lai konsabe. Yeah. I love righteousness and I hate wickedness. I hate it. I despise it. I despise impurity. I despise uncleanliness because I love righteousness. Therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fear. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Oh, Yala baba ba sande la boboya Lelele ba mama ya kandele ba Samena bolaide Yala la la sole mama la ko mama la Yala la la sande lo kerani ya sande la Yole mama ya tome Yande santa la bona Ah, yeah.